Hey, welcome back to the channel. Now, if you're wondering why I'm showing you Windows 10 on a Linux channel, it's because it's not Windows 10. This is a Linux distribution called Linux FX. And in my opinion, this is one of the best distros for people coming over from Windows. It's got a very similar Windows look and feel. It's on a very stable base of Ubuntu long-term support. And it's got a ton of applications installed out of the box just about everything that you're gonna need without having to install extra apps. Installing Linux FX is super easy. Once you download the ISO, burn it to a thumb drive and boot off that, it brings you to a desktop and lets you fire off the installation pretty much right away. The installation is kind of a hybrid between a Linux installation and a Windows 10 kind of feeling installation. Uh, it's very straightforward. If you've ever installed any operating system on any computer, you're gonna not have a problem with this. It's very straightforward. Just follow through the prompts and you'll get it installed. It takes just a few minutes and it installs a fully functioning operating system with a full suite of applications installed on it. So let's jump in and take a look at the Linux FX distribution. All right, so here we are at the login screen. And honestly, this is the second time I'm seeing this login screen. I had some issues with my uh, recording, but when you finish the installation, it brings you to this login, you log in, and then it does some initial steps to set up your uh, desktop. Once you go through those, it's gonna say, you know, it's gotta configure additional files, and then it reboots your system, and you're brought back to this screen. It's gonna try to set up kind of this imitation Cortana for you. I recommend not setting that up as it does not work very well. So now we're back at this login screen. Uh, you can see it looks very similar to Windows 10 login screen, and we're gonna go ahead and log in. So here we are in the desktop, and this does look very, very similar to Windows 10, but it is Ubuntu. It's got the long-term support base uh, with the Cinnamon desktop, just very, very uh, thoroughly themed. And it's got a ton of applications installed, which is a good thing and a bad thing for a new user. It's a very good thing because you have applications for just about everything that you're gonna need to do. Uh, for a more experienced user, you may not want that much quote unquote bloat, but it's very easy to uninstall that stuff. And I think this was really designed uh, to grab people that are coming over from Windows. And I think it's a great uh, distribution for that. You can see that the taskbar looks very similar. The desktop icons are similar. Even the, the menu looks kind of similar. You have some quick launch items along the side and you have some items for locking the screen, logging out and quitting. You have various application categories. We'll get into some of these in just a minute. But another thing that makes this so nice for Windows users are some of the uh, shortcut commands. So we can do, for instance, a Windows E to open you know, File Explorer, and then we can do a Windows D to minimize everything and show the desktop. There's a few other of the shortcuts that work uh, very similar to Windows. So it's nice, uh, nice touch there that they have some of those shortcuts working. Now, when we open up the quote unquote explorer you can see that it looks very similar where in fact this is nemo um, that's just again themed to look like windows 10. the icons look very similar things are laid out very similarly if you want to get to network drives you can actually either you know just browse form through this network link or if you know the uh, address of one of your network drives you can just uh, go to it and map to it, uh, just put my username and password in, and then I can get to my network shared stuff. So some of the thing along the bottom, you can see that it comes pre-installed with Google Chrome. It's got that uh, Nemo, which they have it themed by like Explorer. It has, you know, the icon for the Windows Store, but that just opens up the Software Center, the Ubuntu Software Center. In Windows 10, this opens the virtual desktops or whatever they call it. In Linux, it's usually called workspaces. And here it works just the same. You click on that, you can go to your different workspaces and then you know toggle back to whichever one you're working on. So that works the same. This is that uh, pseudo Cortana 
I'm not going to mess with that. I, I tried it out a little bit and it's, uh, it's not great. The search bar is a Google search bar. So if we do test, it'll bring up a Google search for whatever we search for there. And we can go quickly into settings, our task manager. It's uh, in Windows 10, this would be kind of the equivalent of right clicking on the start menu. In here, you just click this double up arrow and you can get to a bunch of quick settings. Now, as you can see, this is a light theme and in recent versions of Windows 10, you can also do a dark theme. This is no different. If we go into the menu and just type in themes, we can switch to from this Linux FX10 to FX10 dark, just uh, icons stay the same. Controls, we can switch over uh, mouse and then we can switch over the background as well. And now we have our dark theme that's pretty unified with throughout the operating system. Again, uh, they did a pretty nice job on this, but if you don't want it to look like Windows anymore, you can go into the themes and just download any themes that you want. You can, uh, you know, then switch to whatever themes that you want and, you know, change the complete look of it so it doesn't look like Windows 10 anymore if you don't want it to. That's one thing that's nice about Linux and nice about this distribution. Uh, it's great because people coming over from Windows 10 are gonna be very familiar with it. But as you learn more about Linux, you can get in and tweak the settings and just uh, modify things to your heart's content. All right, next thing I want to talk about is all these applications that are in the start menu. And we have all these different categories and accessories. We have just a ton of stuff. We have a, you know, a, a ISO burner that burns it to a thumb drive. We can take screenshots, text editors. Uh, this has Visual Studio Code, which also shows up under programming. Under games, we have Steam. So you can click and install the Linux version of Steam. You know, graphics, we have GIMP. Uh, installed, which is kind of a Photoshop alternative application. We have a vector drawing program, Office. This is really interesting because they have obviously the Office icons, but even on some of them, they call it Excel, PowerPoint, and Word, where in reality, it's an application called Only Office, and it looks very similar. It has a very similar feel to Microsoft Office, but obviously it is not Microsoft Office, but you can read and write uh, Microsoft Office files in here. And the compatibility is pretty decent, not perfect, but pretty decent. Um, sound and video, we got VLC media player. We can do screen recording, Kodi Media Center. I'm not gonna go through everything in here, but you get the idea. You have just about everything you need to get going. This even has, uh, I think under internet is a Citrix receiver. So if you use Citrix to connect to your uh, work while you're working from home during this whole pandemic thing, then you can use Citrix receiver. I use VDI at my work and I access my virtual desktop through Citrix receiver. So for me, this is set up out, out of the box. You also have Skype, Microsoft Teams is in here and um, even the, they even have the Zoom client. So this basically has just about everything that you're gonna need out of the box. Now, like I said, there is a ton of stuff in here and you may not want everything that's in here. So let's find an application that we don't want. Um, how about Skype? Say I don't want Skype. I can just right click on it and uninstall. You can uninstall everything. I'm not actually not gonna go through it, but you would just type in your, your password there and go through and uninstall it. And you can uninstall all the applications that are in the menu just by right clicking on them and uninstalling makes it super, super simple. If you wanna find new applications, you can go into the software center here and then just search for it. Like say I did uninstall it and then I wanted to install it again. I could search for it and find it here and then just click on it to install it from the software center. Works really, really well. It's uh, been a pretty solid experience. Now, one piece of customization, a basic customization that I didn't talk about is changing the uh, desktop background. And you can do that very easily here, just like in Windows, just right click, change desktop background. 
They have a selection of desktop backgrounds that are very Windows-like. There's all these different uh, colors for this current one. Uh, there's this dark Windows one. I kind of like that one a lot. And this one cracked me up down at the bottom here. We have the uh, this dark Windows, but we got the penguin peeking in. <laughs> so <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. I don't know. Maybe... Uh, Maybe not, but anyway, uh, very easily to change the desktop background there. So let's talk a little bit about Windows applications. Now this looks like Windows, but it is Linux. So normally you can't run Windows applications, but this does come with Wine. And if we go into here, we have the Wine tricks that we can use to kind of tweak some of the wine settings. What wine does, it stands for wine is not an emulator and it lets you run certain Windows applications in Linux. It doesn't work with all uh, Windows applications and it's kind of hit and miss. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't work at all. And sometimes you really have to tweak them. That's where you know this kind of comes in handy. But this lets you download some applications and install them, even though this isn't Windows. So it gives you even more of that feeling of using the Windows operating system, even though this is Linux. Now, again, it's going to be hit and miss as to what Windows applications you're going to be able to run in here. But, um, you know, you, you may have some luck with the one you want. Point is, Wine is installed out of the box. You don't have to worry about installing that later. So that's really all I wanted to show you on this. Again, I think this is one of the best uh, distributions for people coming over from Windows 10. It's uh, very familiar when they're coming over and you can also tweak it once you start learning more about Linux. It's got all those applications that are installed so you don't have to worry about installing anything. And it's on the very stable Ubuntu long-term support base. So this is a great option. I hope you found this useful or informative. If you did, hit that thumbs up. If you really liked it, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so. And let me know down in the comment section if there's anything else that you want me to check out, any specific uh, distributions or desktop environments or anything else in Linux for that matter. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you next time.